Scott. I'm Scott Hayes. This is Radio Caravan. Of course, uh, you're listening to Cakes 93.5, Laguna's only FM. And in the studio for the second time, we have the actress, the model, the dancer, the female bodybuilder, and uh, I love this one, the muscle goddess. I like that. I, I like, do. like that. Scott. <laughs> <laughs> Miss That's Lauren. Back. <laughs> Lauren Powers. Yeah, baby. Look yeah. at that. Woo! <laughs> Good morning, everyone. She's Good morning. We're glad to be here again. Yeah, for those who can't see, she's a, what's that called, a double bicep pose? A front double bicep. Front double bicep pose. So um, she's here, and she's going to talk about something that she's involved with, and then she's going to come back in about 30 days or when you're oh, ready. The big reveal. The big okay. reveal to talk <laughs> again about this. But uh, I wanted to just chat briefly about you're a phenomenal specimen physically. I mean, yes, you know, it's is. clear. Here's five dollars. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and obviously, you're passionate about bodybuilding. You work hard at it. You've I devoted do. your life to it. You, uh, but why? What is sort of the fascination? question. What's the fascination <laughs> with it all? Well, it's overall health and wellness now. I've kind of gotten out of the whole heavy, hardcore competition. Right. Moved into being a promoter of the lifestyle. I actually have my own fitness competitions now. Right which are awesome. We'll talk about that in a minute. We will. It's so exciting. But just to be a role model, I, I look extreme for a reason. I think we talked about that last time. My mm -hmm. physique is by design. It's not It's not any mistake. It's on purpose. <laughs> yeah. It's to, hello, get in your face and get your attention. So maybe you look beyond just the biceps and look, listen to what I have to say because what I say is very important. Right. I've lived a l lifestyle that's you know different than most, and I've had an amazing, amazing journey, and I'm here to share that. That's so, beautiful. I yeah. love that. Is there yes. anybody in this room you don't think you could take in a fight? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you could beat Jim in a, an arm wrestle. Yeah. 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 You want to arm wrestle? Take her? me to dinner. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a fighter, baby. I'm a lover. Ooh, <laughs> I love that. I like girls. That's right. So that's the heart. That's my logo. It's all about the love. Yeah, and we, we got some of the shirts as well. Beautiful shirts, by Thank the way. You. So, you know, I'm Thank sure you. people can purchase them online, I'm assuming. Go to your website. Yeah, that last stuff, laurenpowers.com. You'll see right. what's happening with me, the yeah. promotions coming up. But I believe what's exciting right now is I've been casted to go on uh, E's upcoming number one show. It's called Botched. Right. And it's with the doctors, Dr. Terry DeBro and Dr. Paul Nassa from their. The housewives. One the husbands of the housewives. The husbands of the housewives. One from Orange County, the other from, from Beverly Hills. Okay. Yes. They have um, united and did a spinoff show of their own because they're amazing plastic surgeons. Right. And they're doing. Um, it's called Botch. It's plastic called botched. surgery's gone bad. There I think you it's. Go. A, yeah. Well, what they do is they help people that have had some hor horrendous um, experiences with right. plastic surgery. Yeah, because Lauren, you're not really botched. No, no, no Jill, I'm not really a, um, a botched candidate for the show. But I'm good TV. You're good TV. <laughs> you are good TV. <laughs> and radio and well, everything. No, but I've, I've actually been through you know, my own experiences, with, especially with breast surgery over the years. Since I was 18, I've had reductions, and it's taken 10 surgeries to get me to where I'm at today, right. which is still not perfect. Yeah. But let you me, know us girls in Orange County, we got to be perfect. <laughs> well, let, me ask you, uh, let me ask you about that, Lauren. Why 10 breast surgeries? Is it because of the nature of your workouts that's... That had something to do with it, Scott. Um, um, like I said, I was really large when I was younger. I exploded mm -hmm. at 18. I was flat until 18, and then I was 40 double D. Mm -hmm. Just like that, literally almost overnight. Wow. Everybody, everybody teased me for having no breasts, and I'm like, I'll show you. Boom. Yeah. <laughs> then they were too big for my career. I was a surfer and all these things when I was younger, and I did some runway modeling in Hawaii, and I was just too large. So yeah. we reduced them. And that was the beginning of the nightmare. So oh, okay. I technically was botched as a young as a young gal growing up, and I've had numerous surgeries to correct that. So these doctors here have gotten together, and we've talked about it, and they are going to help me because my career is to be a role model in this outer appearance of yeah. fitness, you know, which is it's kind of judged on your how you look on the outside, which sure. is unfortunate, but it is what it is. And I promote health and wellness in my fitness competition, so yeah. I have to look a certain way. So the, Dr. Nass is going to help me with my face, which I'm so excited. So you're going to have a facelift? Uh, just a lower. Uh -huh. Okay. Make me look 17. Okay. <laughs> wow. I know. Don't be jealous. No. I am. <laughs> so I'm very excited about that. He's an expert in that field, and then Dr. Dubrow will be repairing my breasts for the last time. Uh, and I go under Monday. Today's Saturday, so I've got one more day left. So Monday morning, it's a big send-off. Yeah. Um, I'll be going under, and it's going to be exciting. The, you'll see it on TV. So it's, it's a big season. Season two is coming up. They've got uh, 65 patients that have been scheduled for this because they've got bumped up to 20 episodes. 
it's a big deal. It's a popular show. These doctors are amazing. Right. They're doing amazing things for a lot of people. I'm just fortunate to be part of the cast, and I'm excited about it. You said about $150,000. They're of, expensive. <laughs> is that <laughs> what you're, you're undergoing? Something like that. Yeah. No, they, yeah. they mentioned something about 60 each. Yeah. 60 so. each breast. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. So let me ask you. It would be, well, I'm sorry, I can only pay for one. <laughs> You're not getting three, that's imagine. for sure. Yeah. No, it's, I'm getting very, very um, well taken care of. Yeah, it sounds way. like you are, definitely. Yeah. And, yeah. I'm, I'm and what are they doing with the breasts? To... Is it going to be a reduction? Is it going to be... I'm going to go smaller. My uh -huh. whole look is to become um, a more feminine look. Right. With the face and the breasts and, you know, the whole body. Right. I don't lose my biceps, don't worry. <laughs> but um, it's too, so, because I'm single, so the whole goal is to be all feminine and sexy to attract Aww. a man. Beautiful, yeah. So any man out there want to date me, <laughs> we're sure looking for a reveal for my birthday, which is coming up December 13, 12, 13, 14. Which Hold is on. Let me, before we get there, I'm going to save that for the end because I want people to kind of be exposed. Well, I want to date for this date. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know what we can do? We can do a show on just getting you a date. There you get go. you on here with the new kind of a, over on the radio bachelorette. That's right, exactly right. Yeah, we'll bring roses. I, I think that would be right? fun. I think we'd be. Good. Well, we're talking about that. That's my next goal is to go on bachelorette, and then I've, my goal has always been to be on Dancing with the Stars. Yeah. So hopefully, with this all the pub publicity, I'm going to be on the OC Housewives coming up next season. I'm going to be Tamara and probably Lynn Curtin's um, trainer. Yeah. So we're excited about that. I'll be working with Tamara and the, and the girls. Actually, I'm thinking I'm going to be her bodyguard. More. I think so. <laughs> you know, uh, interesting, by the way, Dancing with the Stars. That's the name of that show. I saw a video of you uh, online dancing on stage with a partner. And that's the first thing I thought. I thought you would yeah. make a great Thank candidate you. for Dancing with the Stars. I think America Have you pre think approached so. them about that? I have. Yeah, good it's for hard. you. It's, yeah, it's, it's number hard one get, show. It's a little yeah, difficult totally. to get in. But I can see where you'd be perfect I just need a little more fame, just a little more. You're getting there. The book's coming out. I'm yep. writing a book right now. It's called Unleash Your Powers. Really? Nice. Yes. That sounds so great. talk about all my journeys and the, what I've been through and all the different, you know, trials and triumphs. <laughs> to get let, to me, let, me, let me ask you this. Um, we talked last time we were on the show about growth, the human growth hormone. Yeah, so, um, and, still and you're, big advocate. You're still big advocate. are all over it. They know about it. They, okay. they want me to take more for my recovery. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm excited. That sounds great. All right, let's talk. Superwoman. Woo! Look at the double <laughs> bicep. I know we've all been waiting for this, if for the what we called last time the big reveal. We have actress, model, dancer, female bodybuilder Lauren Powers, who good underwent morning. good morning, who <laughs> underwent extensive cro uh, reconstructive surgery on the reality TV show Botched. Right. And it was like hundred and fifty thousand dollars worth something of something crazy like that. Something crazy like that. So I mean, <laughs> tell us again. They're really good. The doctors are just amazing, and they're worth every penny. As you can see, I'm just nineteen days out of surgery from my doctor Paul Nassif did my face. Uh huh. Just like a, they call it a mini facelift and a neck pull. There's a there's a better term for that. But I forgot what it's called. That's, That's okay. That sounds good. <laughs> right, neck pull. <laughs> neck pull. <laughs> Not to be confused with tractor pull. <laughs> And then uh, Dr. Terry Dubrow uh, did my breasts again. And so I actually went smaller this time. You did, okay. It and I'm going like to give it. Jill my extra. Thank you. I want it. <laughs> they look, look uh, smaller. Yeah. Really, really small there. Yeah. You yeah. see them glistening. 19 the, days uh, out. Uh, zero pain. Though. I mean, you get what you pay for. I came through this thing flying colors. Yeah. I have an ounce of pain. In three or four days, I'm out running around town doing all the Christmas parties and yeah. Well, you it look didn't beautiful. Slow me down a bit, actually. Yeah. <laughs> so. And so the, the the whole reconstructive process was it scary for you going in? And you were saying there was no pain that came out as a result of that either. Well, it's always scary going under um, anesthesia. I would think it was so. Almost a nine-hour surgery. Oh, wow. Between, yeah, between both the doctors. But they said I woke up laughing and I was saying Namaste. Oh, good. <laughs> no <That's laughs> <funny>. figures. <laughs> <laughs> and I went in with such a positive attitude, and I think yeah. that really helps. And Good. I really trust them with my life, obviously. Sure. And came out the same way. I don't remember a thing. Yeah. They gave me the good stuff. Right. <laughs> Seriously. And I, people came to visit me, and I, did, I didn't even remember. It was yeah. just, I, I can't believe you don't remember. I was yeah, there funny, by your Jill, side. You were the one in yeah. the sexy nurse outfit, right? <laughs> <laughs> Here love, we go. Love those fishnets. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jill, you, you guys have been friends a long time. Yeah, and so are. what's sort of your uh, impression of the reconstructive surgery process on Lauren? There are two things going on here. I definitely can see through her jawline and her neck and her mm -hmm. cheeks are higher. It's stunning. Yeah. I mean, really Thank stunning. You. Your boobs don't look that much smaller. So <laughs> <laughs> not to panic. <laughs> Unless you have them up really high. But what I'm really, am <laughs> <Good bra. laughs> what I'm really amazed at is 
19 days out. Mm -hmm. You said your neck was bruised, and you're, but you're For not. Just a couple and days. you told me why. Why do they think well, that is? Well, a few is? things. Actually, both doctors to tell me that I'm the fastest healing patient they've ever seen. Wow. Ever, separately. Yeah. I went two, day, you know, two days apart yeah. for my uh, post-op checkups. And they both just flipped out of how quickly I healed. I did all the supplements they told me, the Arnica and tons of vitamin C. And then I'm also on the human growth hormone. And they both attest that we're yeah. healing. <laughs> you know, yeah. On or off camera, whatever. It, HGH. That works. HGH, I'm telling you. Anti-aging, yeah. repairing the cells. Yeah. Just really really is working for me. I, I almost feel like you're, my stuff's not fake. <laughs> <laughs> I almost feel like your eyes pop a lot more yeah. now that your eyes just woke I, up, I, Scott. No, no, no I mean, <laughs> this is early show for me. I, I know they didn't do anything to the eyes, correct? Yeah, no, 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 but no, something just lower. Of course she's just my, yeah. my cheeks and neck. Yeah, I mean beautiful. I yeah. think as the cheekbones are higher, it's going to emphasize the eyes more too. It just looks stunning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, when will this show air? Do we have any sense of that? It's on season two of Botched on E Network. Okay. And it's they're expecting a, a big, a big to do. They went from eight episodes to twenty. Oh wow! And I believe the first season is to air, or the first episode is to air January fifteenth. Is what I've heard. I'm not sure when my particular gotcha. segment will air. Uh -huh. At this point, we're still filming. We handle everything from general corporate formation, partnership, real estate. We have a full service litigation practice, and we also have a group of lawyers that handle bankruptcy and general insolvency matters. We offer big firm experience with a small firm feel. The person that you're hiring is the person who's going to be representing you throughout your entire map. The slogan of redefining full service attempts to capture two things. One, an explanation of the breadth or the diversity of the legal services that we provide, but also to recognize that our service to our community does not end with our legal services. Whether it's a pro bono opportunity where we're representing people for free, or whether we're actually volunteering on a project like Habitat for Humanity, for example. It includes the philanthropic efforts, the volunteering of time, and the donating of resources outside just the four corners of this law office. You're listening to KX 93.5, Laguna's Only FM. I'm Scott Hayes. This is Radio Caravan. I'm in the studio this morning with Jim Bastian. And of course, our featured guest, one of our featured guests today, is the actor, the singer-songwriter, Chris Mulkey. Welcome there he is Chris. on guitar. <laughs> uh, you may remember him from the movie Captain Phillips, which was just on TV the other night. It just happened to be at the part where you had that great one-liner about, I'm not, what was that one-liner? I'm, 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 a, I'm a merchant seaman. I'm not, I'm not a soldier. I'm not paid to fight pirates. <laughs> I'm not paid to fight pirates. I'm not paid to fight pirates. I said, I'm a union guy. <laughs> My union doesn't cover that. Hey, he's also been on Boardwalk. Everything. 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 I mean, ah. he's one of those faces you see all the time, yeah. definitely. Boardwalk Empire, is that true? Yeah. Uh, yeah. 24. How about that? Me, John Voight and I, yeah. Yeah, and Twin Peaks, David Lynch's Twin Peaks, which the first season that came out, that was a phenom yeah, when it came up. Yeah, we had a good time. We had a good time. Yeah, what was it like working with David Lynch? It was great. He's he's one of the greatest guys in the world. I mean, he's just really, really great. Yeah. And then how about Tom Hanks? What was it like working with Tom Hanks? Tom Hanks, one of the greatest guys in the world. They go in the greatest guy in the world Hall of Fame along with you, Scott. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. We, we just met, so I don't know. You know I mean, I'll, I'll aspire yeah. to get there. No, <laughs> no but I'm really great, uh, great times doing it. I, I've had a, I, I generally have a great time. It's unbelievable. Well, we were talking at the break that you have a pretty nice lifestyle, it sounds like. I called you one day, you were out golfing. I called you another day, I think you were in a, a restaurant bar somewhere, or I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I, I, well, my band plays at House of Blues. Yeah. I play up there with uh, Dr. Greg Davis and Mark Marcellino and those guys, and it's just a rocking good time, and uh, Chris Adelman is, uh, of course, a great guitar player who plays with me. And I mean, we have a great time, and then I just do movies and stuff like that. Well, let's back up. I mean, we're here really to talk about your music. I just wanted to give yeah. people a sense of sort of your background uh, as an actor, and I think that uh, you've got an impressive resume. Anybody who wants to look you up online. But we're really here to talk about your music. You want to talk briefly about how you... I mean, are you more a musician than an actor, and how you got involved in music? I was a musician first, mm -hmm. and I uh, used to play in the and in the, uh, in, uh, I used to sit in and, and the blues clubs in uh, Minneapolis. There's a there was a great blues uh, scene in Minneapolis when I was growing up, and a great music scene, and which has continued with Prince and all those guys and right. Doris Day and all. Um, but um, so so I, I I was I was playing music in these teen bands and stuff, and then uh, I don't know I got into acting, you know, and uh, 
then I got, I, but I kept the music alive. I, and I made a movie uh, a few years ago down, well, 20 years ago down in Austin, Texas. And uh, Joe Ely, and I met Joe Ely and, uh, and uh, Jimmy Dale Gilmore and all these old-time Texas guys, you know. And I sang some of my songs. They said, damn, you're a hell of a Texas blues singer. You should get serious about this. So I, I did. And Jerry Jeff Walker was down there, too, the guy who wrote Mr. Bojangles. Oh, April's good friends. I would tell, say hi because Jerry Jeff was one of my inspirations, and so I'd go over to Jerry Jeff's house and we'd play music, and basically I just tried to get listen on the mic, to him. April. Okay. And, uh, I'm on. And, yeah. Uh, so then so we'd go over to Jerry Jeff's house, and you know, and sit around the pool and play music, and yeah, love yeah. Jerry Jeff. We hang out every year in Belize. Oh God! Yeah. Oh, that's a, that's so that's meant. We are April. April and I are also from Minnesota originally. Yeah, exactly. Minnesota. Yeah. You yeah. Betcha. Yeah, we are. Yeah, betcha. Twin cities. So so then the, so he said you should get serious about this so I I did and now so are you a blues guy? I'm uh, kind of blues alternative you know blues and alternative uh, alternative rock it's like uh, you know I've sold about forty songs to TV and movie I'm in ASCAP good you for know, you wow you know, and the song and that you heard uh, um, uh, talking about love I just put in a movie and um, you know you know but I sing yeah. mostly about I don't sing the I don't sing about blues because I'm not you know. I'm not very blue. I don't know. I mean, I <laughs> yeah, it don't strike not. me as a blue pa- unless you have a blue period. Well, I have a blue watch. shirt on. And That's a, true. And a tight pair of black jeans. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> looking fine. All right. So, is it you solo typically at these concerts? Do you have a band with you? Do you is it you and the band? Uh, how does that work? Ninety-nine point ninety-nine percent. I always play with the band. I have okay. a quartet, a snappy, snappy quartet, and. Uh, and um, you know that's me playing. I, I play I play solos a bunch. You know okay. I play. I just played when I was in Minnesota. Minnesota um, this yeah. last couple of weeks when we were recording um, my new album, uh, uh, Christmas uh, Boogie. Christmas Boogie. Dun, dun, dun. Um, then I played about I played five uh, five different uh, venues uh, solo with a friend of mine, Paul Metza and Willie Walker, uh-huh. uh, amazing guys. But I would come up and. But generally, I'm with the band. I play with Eddie Bodan and all these guys down in Louisiana. You know, uh, that's what I was making a movie down there, and uh, I ran into those guys. And so, you know, Wayne Toops and and Sean Vidrine, this amazing oh, accordion player, is going to play with me. You have to come. You have to come. Y'all have to come on February 17th at House of Blues. It's Fat Tuesday, and we're the band. And I'm bringing Fat the guy, Tuesday. And I'm bringing in the guys from Lake Charles, Louisiana, the Cajun guys, and All we're right. going to throw that sheet down. All right, careful. You said <laughs> sheets, right? I say, I say, I, yeah. You said sheets. I said throw ship, sheets. actually. I said ship. Ships down. I love that. <laughs> Woo! And Captain Phillips He reference. was right there. He knows. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> we Googled it. Thanks to your next guest, he Googled it. Hey, uh, you, so let's do this, man. Let's play a song. I know you got a Christmas album coming out. I'd rather wait on that. Yes. And you want to open with, uh, start with, uh, you know, any particular song. I think you'd mentioned, uh, well. Thinking About You is an interesting song because, uh, you know, I'm, I've been married for like 33 years. You know, I got married when I was one year old. Yeah. And it was a arranged marriage. It's how the Irish do it, I guess. <laughs> but, um, you know, but it's that bit, you know, every time, you know, like I'll have breakfast and I'll think about Karen. You know, I'll we'll go for a walk and I'll think about Karen. You're always thinking, you're always thinking about the like the one you love or yeah. you know and it's like you know i'm here it's beautiful i wonder what karen would think you know it's like so this is a song called uh, thinking about you i guess very nice you know baby we need to talk not to argue but to celebrate yeah If I could turn back the hands of time, you know I surely would. I'd hold you in my arms again, it would be all good. All the dreams you know I've had, the dreams of you. Every day I want to make those dreams come true. Can't stop thinking about you. Oh, yeah. Can't stop thinking about you. That felt good. Oh, that first trip we took, me and you. Mountains in the cities flew by, just us two. And that first room we had, bed for two. And the love we made that night made us laugh like fools. Can't stop 
thinking about you. Come on, Scott. Can't stop thinking about you. You did good. Check it out. Oh. If I could catch the sands of time, you know I surely would. I'd hold them in my hands, you know, it would be all good. All the dreams you know I had, made them come true. And I thank the Lord above for giving me you, 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 you. Can't stop thinking about you, baby. Can't stop thinking about you. That's right, baby. Can't stop thinking about you all the time. You're on my, on my mind, baby. Ooh, golf clap here. Very nice. Yeah. You know, if I had to describe that song to somebody, I'm not sure I could, but I kind of hear a little bit of uh, Tom Waits. Yeah, Tom is, Waits. Is that a fair sort of comparison? Uh, I love comparison? Tom Waits. Tom Waits is fantastic. He's and, a huge inspiration. And, and lyrically, Randy Newman, because Randy Newman has that fun sort of, you know, I'm telling a story. Why are you laughing? Everybody says that. Yeah. Everybody says that. And Van Morrison's the next and, guy. And Van Morrison as well, yeah. 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 Is that the Irish thing? The Van Morrison thing? I don't know, man. I mean, I don't know. Tom Waits is from San Diego, so I'm, uh, yeah. that's where, that's, isn't San Diego in Ireland? Yeah, yeah I think somewhere it is. in there, yeah. yeah. But you got such great personality, and i got to believe that on stage, uh, you've got great stage presence as well. Is that fair of me to say? Uh, well, you know, some would say, yeah, yeah, we have a good time. My uh, my piano player, is, uh, Mike, Mark Marcelino, is a fantastic piano player. He says, Chris, we got you know, we got we got really stick the music and stuff like that. You're talking a lot, and I said, I said, <laughs> I said, Mark, we've been playing for 12 years, man. You know that this is not a musical act; it's a nightclub act. All right? I mean, come on now. <laughs> he, he just laughed. Hey, is selling songs for movies is that a um, is that a uh, difficult process to go through? And can you actually make money off it? Um, selling songs to m movies and TV is like playing in the NFL. Uh, and you get injured, too. Yeah. Your, but, your ego. But, but explain your analogy there. I don't think we use there. that one, Chris. That's not the one we want to use. No, um, but, <laughs> um, but people will just uh, will call me up and they'll go, oh, man, I heard that, that one song and it was just, uh, it just inspired and we just completely fit. And it, uh, it's. I made this movie with Tara Buck, um, and uh, it's called it's called Best Driver in the County, and you, you can you can see it online. It's a beautiful, uh, just a little short film that mm -hmm. that uh, another Irishman directed, and and uh, but uh, but it, it, it the director just called me up and said, "Oh my God, uh, talking about love is is the perfect song for this." And in the end of the movie, when the, the, they pull back and reveal this whole beautiful place, it, it is indeed. Um, Hey, hey, we we talked about this, Chris. <laughs> you know, come on. You know what? You know when you're making a cowboy movie, you know what happens? If you're riding, if you're riding along on the, in your horse and uh, and and you're something Does, like you that happens. Do you have to take happens. the call? And no, no. Oh. And it's um, that was Walgreens. My prescription's ready. <laughs> uh, I won't ask what kind of prescription. It's it's um, it's uh, it's it's a hard prescription to get. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's good, isn't it? Yeah. No, that was my wife saying, I'm listening to you, you sound great. Yeah, well, you do sound great, <laughs> you know? Funny. Hey, we had Jack Tempshin. We had Jack Tempshin in the studio. Jack Tempshin wrote a bunch of songs for the Eagles. He wrote Peaceful, Easy Feeling, oh, and God, Already yeah. Gone, oh, and You gosh. Belong to the City. And we oh. talked about the inspiration of, say, Peaceful, Easy Feeling, right? Uh -huh. Do you get inspired constantly to write songs? Are you just sort of on the road with your guitar and you're writing songs all the time? Or how does that work for you? How does that process work for you? I have a... Um, I have a uh, I have an active list of, I have, I have, I like riffs. Um, I have a bunch of riffs that are hanging around a lot. Yeah. Um, um, it's, uh, you, you know. You gonna play one? You know, the stuff like that, is, and that, like, or this one. That's really Stevie Wonder is what that is. I mean, yeah. really. But, um, you know, you get those riffs. And, and then usually then I'll see, like, I'll say, you know, 
I'll see something or somebody will say something and then like we were in I, I would love to play this song for you okay okay <clears throat> apropos of this is a great segue we didn't talk about this at all but okay. it's it's uh, really dead on um, uh, the I was in Austin Texas playing with uh with Mike Vernon, and uh, of course, I'm here courtesy of my friendship with Keith Taylor, who's a great musician and records all my CDs up in up in Fountain, Fountain City. Valley. Fountain City, isn't it? Fountain Valley. Uh, my friend from uh, my friend from Louisiana always calls it. Man, are you still over at Keith's house out in Fountain City, California? <laughs> That's uh, Sean Vidry. I right, get to the here. story though. But it's anyhow, so so we're down there. We're with the Green Mesquite Barbecue, and, and we're talking about guitars. And I have like 12 guitars now. God bless me. And uh, people have more, but I play all the mothers, okay? Exactly. I don't, they're not underneath the god dang bed, you know. <laughs> and so, um, and, he, and, and uh, of course, Mike Vernon has, I don't know how many guitars. And he, he says, you know, Chris, takes a bite of his sandwich. And he goes, no, Chris, basically guitars is just wood and wire. And I said, wood and wire? He said, God, you're going to write that damn song, aren't you? And well, give so, us a taste of wood and wire. Right from the start, it had my heart and soul. White pearl knobs and black enamel. Rocking like Chuck, rolling like thunder. Knocking down ladies with that heavy lumber. I know I'm preaching to the choir. Love that wood and wire. Wood and wire. We got a long history, I don't care about that. I want to roll to the club. I want to play with the cats, ride in my car with the radio on. You know, I turn. Feel every song I know I'm preaching to the choir Love that wood and wire Mercy Mercy Cause it's a six string plugging thing Let it ring ding a lang <laughs> It's a jump ship What a trip Gotta be too hip I know I'm preaching to the choir Love that wood and wire Mercy. Mercy. Get one of these, you can be a star. Get tattoos, you've gone too far. <laughs> Club by night and pool by day. You never stand in line and you never have to pay. I know I'm <laughs> preaching to the choir. Love that wood and wire. Let him go. Can we play some? I know I'm preaching to the choir, baby, baby, baby. Ba, 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 ba. Love their wood and fire. Gun for hire. Love their choir. Woo! Nice. Golf clap! <laughs> <laughs> You've got to be one of the most uninhibited persons we've ever had in this studio. Wow, because I'm naked? <laughs>